Hello dear viewer, you might have seen that uh, Bruce XJet or RC model reviews, depending on how you wish to look at him, uh, is playing around making hydrogen for an FBV balloon and I also know that Chris iForce 2D is also considering high altitude ballooning. And funny enough, it is a hobby I enjoy. It is a super nerdy hoodie, hobby hoddy, hobby, but it, it, it brings together things that have been throughout my life, that's radio and balloons. What I'm doing now is using a software-defined radio from radiogeek.co.uk and that is a receiver that's attached to the web that allows me to hear a balloon flying over the UK. I'm using another little bit of software. Um, that is the modem, the Fastlight digital modem, and that's doing the decoding. So that's where my QTH, where the position is at the moment, and that's me decoding it. You see it decodes all sorts of other modes. This is a very old-fashioned way of doing business but it works and it's reliable so this is 50 board RTTY coming down the hill uh, radio teletypes but around since the 20s I think the Americans were using it in the 30s to communicate between Hawaii and San Francisco and then I think they made the jump across uh, the states a little bit later um, and it, it, I think it's even older than that I think it comes from the 1800s from out of telegraphic standards so there's a fantastic community if you look at ukhas.org that will get you all the information you need and the more people that are receiving your balloon as it flies and the more chance you are you're gonna gonna get it back you've got an expensive payload that's again where my qth was these green lines that is receivers that have heard a complete packet and the information is sent to this map and <laughs> Robert's your father's brother it's displayed it's as simple as that you can use LoRa radios LoRa radios are the modern way of doing it and these guys at UK has have got LoRa radios working to the point where one of them will act as a repeater so you fly one or you, you fly several out and then they come down and let's say there are no receivers within a few miles of them on the ground then they launch one at the end and that picks them all up again and the positions on the ground are shown. So these guys are very, very far ahead of the curve. I just like the sound of RTTY. I am an old duffer. It's with the, the software is free. The community is free to join and it's say it just feels very, very much like the open source autopilot community. Very clever people getting great stuff done. Um, you that to do this RTTY method, you need a fairly expensive radio, an NTX2, which is um, about 30 quid, I think, something like that. So, you do want to get it back. Um, and obviously, a receiver on the ground, be that a software defined uh, radio, or uh, I use actually a, a, an HF receiver um, uh, for better results. Obviously, the better receiver, the better results. Uh, you can use ESP32s, but if you're going to launch a high altitude balloon, um, stay away from uh, APRS, which is the ham radio way of doing business. Uh, there's a green, that's a green, so that's a green packet going up. So that's the, a complete with checksum packet, and that will arrive on the map, and that position will help that flight. Um, there's people flying these things all around the world um, on various different frequencies, and there are even balloons, uh, just tiny, tiny mylar toy balloons they do a few clever things to them but they are not not much more than the the big silver balloons you get for birthday parties um that go completely around the world and they use really impressive digital modes um jt9 and whisper being two of them and uh, on on whisper you can with a few milliwatts you can communicate all around the world uh, i sort of oh, i'm going into rant mode aren't i but it's sort of why i i I shy away from these conversations of with FPV of put in a much bigger, um, you know, more power. Let's, let's get a 10 watt amplifier and things like that. It's not about that. It's about tuning your antennas and correct antennas. And if you do that, you can go a long way with a little. And if you're going a long way with a little, it means you're using a lot less power. So that's why a couple of uh, watch batteries or a couple of little watch battery size rechargeable batteries and solar solar panels will keep the thing alive for days and days and days anyway i'm ranting on enough it's tuesday night i've got to get ready for drone and the drone and sundry hangout at 2100 gmt i hope you will join us then and i will leave you with the sound of rtty see you later <laughs>